Yeah. I didn't move this part last time. <laughs> um, friends, how are you? My name's Mom and Dad. I'm gonna get down here on eye level. Because <laughs> this stage doesn't, it doesn't do anything for me. <laughs> I have something I really want to share with you. It's kind of been heavy on my heart for a little while. Um, I consider myself a fairly intelligent woman. This blonde, it's, it's not natural. Uh, I pay for this part. Um, I have a couple degrees. I have some critical thinking skills. Woo! You know, that's Woo! fun, right? Woo! Ladies <laughs> of critical thinking! <laughs> Um, but there is something in life that just really stumps the hell out of me, and I, I just have to get off my chest. Um, the ratio of water to oats in making steel cut oatmeal is mind blowing. Mind blowing. You, you, you basically have to have like a, you know, be like a NASA engineer to understand the ratio. There's like derivatives, there's quadratics and like inverse denominators of such um, in the calculations of making the perfect steel cut oatmeal. It's ridiculously difficult. Now listen, my friends, I work at a coffee shop on the weekends only. Thank you, this is where you applause. And they have one of those like industrial cooker machine things, you know, where you can make oats or soup or something like that. Um, if you don't put enough water in, it coagulates and it globs up and you can't serve that oatmeal. If you put too much water in, it becomes like an oatmeal soup. So then when you put the brown sugar in, it just kind of melts around and now it's in just like the oat broth or whatever you would call that, right? You can't serve that either. Now if you turn the thing up too high, it burns the oatmeal. You can't serve that. But my favorite, my favorite is if you turn it down too low. It takes three hours to cook oatmeal. Three hours. So by the time you get to a, a cooked oatmeal meal, <laughs> um, it's lunchtime. And believe you me, no one eats steel cut oatmeal at lunchtime. No one. If there's anyone sitting next to you who says, oh yeah, I know I'll have some oatmeal at lunchtime. They're lying to you. They're legit lying to you. That would never happen. Okay, now here's the thing about, if you go on a lunch date, if someone orders oatmeal on your lunch date, my advice to you is to Get out. Get out now. Run quick. The red flags, they're a flying. Okay? Because no one eats steel cut oats at lunch. But what I have come to the conclusion of is um, I do believe. Have you guys heard of the trend at the bars? Like if you go on a date and you're feeling kind of uncomfortable, you can go to the bartender and you can order a certain drink and they like kind of know what you're like signaling, right? So you can go to the bar and say, hey, I want a golden shot. And the bartender's like, oh, she's in distress. Like, she needs some help. Anyone here heard of this? Okay, all right. So, here's my idea. We do it at the coffee shop. Predator. As a barista, but with oatmeal. For lunch dates. Okay, so it's a lunch date. It has to be after 12.30 p.m. Someone comes to the counter and they say, hey, I'd like some oatmeal with raisins. The barista knows immediately this person needs an Uber ride. No problem. I got you, girl. I got you. Someone comes to the counter and they say, hey, I'd like some oatmeal with some brown sugar only. That means watch my coffee and go to the bathroom. Watch my coffee. But if they order oatmeal with bananas, I mean, now this is a 911 SOS situation. This gentleman, he's bananas. He's cooking for Cocoa Puffs and I need the hell out and someone's got to do something quick. And since I'm an emergency response barista, it would make sense <laughs> as best as I possibly can. But then I get kind of nervous because I kind of think that this, like, the oatmeal alert scale has maybe been used on me, personally. Um, I got asked out on a date by a guy who I met, like, a couple of months previously. So, to be totally honest, <laughs> I didn't remember what he looked like. Like, not at all, actually. But he <laughs> offered, um, you know, some Mexican food and a margarita. So I was like, hell yeah, I'll see you there. <laughs> so I go to the restaurant, right? I walk to the restaurant, 
I was like, oh damn, I like extra don't remember what this guy looks like. Uh, I see a Hispanic, an attractive Hispanic gentleman at the table, and I said, oh, that's probably him. And no, I'm not profiling anybody. Like, I know the guy who's Hispanic that I was talking to. Like, I know for a fact. I promise you. So anyways, I see him, I was like, oh, I'm gonna play this cool. I got this. So I go to the bathroom, I wash my hands, because naturally it's COVID. 20 seconds, ABC song, right? I go out, and now I'm standing, I would do what anyone would do, and I stand, I stood like 10 feet away from the table, because that's right, and I just stare <laughs> quietly. He's looking down, I'm looking at him, he's looking down, he finally looks up, and he goes, hello? And so, you know, I was like, this is my chance. Sexual chemistry, there you go. I say, hi. <laughs> at that very moment, the man I'm supposed to be meeting is at the bar, and he's all, Megan! <laughs> Megan! And I was like, oh, damn. <laughs> okay, sorry, my bad, my bad. So I approach the bar. As I get closer and closer, I hear just like out of the periphery of my ear, my ear sight. He's like, oh, man, with bananas! Oh, man, with bananas! <laughs> That's all I got for you guys. <laughs>